Hello everyone and welcome back to Love English. I'm Sabra and today we're going to be looking at the beautiful Southern Irish accent, more specifically the Dublin accent. It's a beautiful accent, very sexy, consistently voted one of the sexiest accents that English can be spoken with. So it's a good one to know. We're going to be exploring it from the point of view of how the features change from standard Southern British and also if you want to learn how to do the accent this is going to be a great video for you. Now today we're looking at the Dublin accent specifically but it's important to point out that there is a tremendous amount of variety even within a Dublin accent and the suburbs. However this video will look at the key features which will apply to most of the accents in Dublin and around the suburbs. A few of the famous people that have this accent are Colin Farrell, Saoirse Ronan, Brendan Gleeson, Aidan Turner, my favourite. Beautiful accent, beautiful people. Right, let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about the oral posture of the Dublin accent. So compared to standard Southern British, the mouth is held a lot more tightly, it's a bit more constricted, the jaw comes up a lot more compared to that loose quality that modern RP speakers will have, or RP speakers will have. So it's held much more tightly. As well as that, the tongue will be curled up much more towards the back of the mouth, ready to do that rhotic R. So that brings me nicely to our first feature, which is the rhotic R. So Southern Irish is rhotic, which means that basically you pronounce every R that you see. So you won't be saying or, you'll be saying or. You won't be saying more, you'll be saying more. Let's have a look at some examples. Letter, lover, computer, start, fear, herd, bird. Letter, lover, start, bird, computer. We could try these sentences. I wrote her a letter. My computer's not working. My computer's not working. So basically you're adding in all your R's, not like standard Southern British, where if we get them near a vowel sound, they're very often not pronounced. So if you want to mimic an Irish accent, that is the first thing you need to do. Bring in all the R's if your accent isn't rhotic. But between just working and travelling, it sounds like a cop-out, but between no, working no. and travelling and, and being at home with, with two lad, two fellas that I want to be there for. I came over for the premiere of uh, Brave Heart. And we... Right, so moving on to the next feature. So the Dublin accent doesn't ha does have some issues with the TH sound, which in British English would be th and th. These are called fricative sounds, and basically friction is created when our tongue goes between our teeth. In the Southern Irish accent, these can be, not always, but they can be changed to a T or a D. And this is where you would get that classic, I think, or I thought. Do you think this is good? No, I think what's good? You know, going around a boat, looking at stuff. About such dark stuff, but he throws it together, but there's always something intensely kind of, uh, intense, intensely... Mind-boggling. But, but, well, thankfully not that many people wanted to selfie with me, so... <laughs> <laughs> However, I would say that this is uh, declining. I mean, please tell me in the comments. But I would say that having listened to a lot of Irish speakers uh, during my research for this video, I would say that this is declining um, and much more probably with the young people, with the influence of the British accent, with the influence of American TV. That's not a thing, <laughs> is it? <laughs> you said it was a thing. No. But that used to be quite common, you know. The favourite son would become a doctor and then the idiot brother would be sent off to the priesthood. <laughs> Your brother's a doctor, isn't he? Yes. So the next feature we're going to look at is the T aspiration. And basically this means that T sounds will have more breath on them. So words like but and that, and for example, bite and bit, they'll have like more breath over them. So they're not as plosive, meaning not as stopped by the sound, by the closing of our mouth, as they would be in a standard Southern British accent. You can try these sentences. Can we grab a quick bite? Can we grab a quick bite? We went on a date. We went on a date. I don't think she's right about that. I don't think she's right about that. In relation to the human condition, for me, were fascinating when I read it. I just loved it. But it wasn't a page turner. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> Is there anything you want to tell me about her? Right, turning to the vowel sounds here, the changes in the vowel sounds. I would say the one that always stands out to me and to um, non-Irish speakers is the difference between the modern RP, I, 
and the Irish oi. So it's more of an oi sound, moving towards oi, like the oi in toy. So sometimes you'll just hear it a little bit and other times it will sound very strong. Right, time, kite, fight, life, Ireland. Shall we fly the kite? Shall we fly the kite? I fancy a light bite. I fancy a light bite. Remember, if you're trying to do this accent, then practice these along with me. Kite, right, bite, life. Fight. I, I mean, I love Ireland. I would like to live in other places as well. I mean, I love London and... Wrong. Yes, Dougal, wrong. You remember right and wrong, the difference between the two. Page one of How to Be a Catholic. <laughs> the next one is the change in the long monothong, ah, like in bath, palm, start, heart, in standard Southern British. In a Dublin accent, this is moving much more towards an ah. Again, how much it moves depends on the strength of the accent. So, for example, I've heard Saoirse Ronan really say it much more as an ah, whereas I've heard perhaps more um, softer accents like Aidan Turner not even really move it that much. So it depends on your character if you're an, an actor, what their background is according to how much this will change. And if you're somebody just listening to the Irish accent, just be aware that it could sound more like an ah sound. So let me show you. For example, start would become start. Heart can become heart. Palm can become palm. Bath becomes bath. So you can hear it's moving to an ah. She gave her daughter a bath. She held it in the palm of her hand. She gave her daughter a bath. Yeah. And then you're in there for another two and a half hours. I was about three and a half. Obviously it's a mixture of, of, of writing, cast, location. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a kind of a rough start for us. Um, obviously coming back, fighting in the war. And you know, he was, he was heading down the wrong path. Um. So the next change is the ow sound in town. Now, round, mound, ow. It's a big sound in, in standard Southern British. However, this sound in a Dublin accent comes in a little bit closer and it's said further to the back of the mouth. Round, now, sound, how. For example, we would say, what's that sound? Found, sound, now, round. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. No good cow ever goes back onto the market. <laughs> You're walking down a laneway at night and you've got your keys out because... It's a it's mask of sorts. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, it came out of a lockdown sort of thing. It was there. Right, the last change we're going to be looking at today is the O sound. And basically, again, this is a subtle change, but it is moving backwards again to the back of the mouth. So we're not saying that long O sound. We're saying O. So, for example, in goat, boat, float, you're not saying oh like you would in standard Southern British. You're saying oh. It's a lot shorter, basically. Moat, goat, float, remote. So try a couple of these sentences with me. She bought a new coat. She bought a new coat. I need to get a loan. I need to get a loan. So try saying those along with me. I need to get a loan. She just bought a boat. It's a bit remote. There is one more feature that I didn't have time to mention earlier in the consonants. This is that the final G gets dropped. So in words where you've got an ING, we're not saying ung, we're just literally saying N, like in going, doing, talking. You're dropping that G sound. I was going out. I was going out. She was singing really nicely. She was singing really nicely. Right, everybody, thank you for watching. Please feel free to comment below and tell me just how much some of those vowel sounds change in your particular region of Southern Ireland or around Dublin. And as well as that, if you're interested in accent training, then please look in the description box below to find out more. Also, please tell me what accent would you like me to cover next? Tell me that in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.